This mid-season finale may be called Children of Wrath, but they're going to feel the wrath of us because Jeremiah Otto kicked the bucket. Welcome back to Fog Entertainment, he's dead. And I can't believe it, they done him dirty. They told him to kick the bucket as and kill himself. He refused. He's like, I'm not dying like a rabbit. Like fucking Roger Rabbit. Bunny. What's that guy for Looney Tunes? I can't remember his name. Bugs. What? Bugs Bunny. I'm not dying like Bugs Bunny. I've had too many carrots. Wait, did he kill himself too? Oh, you say, you say he's no dying like a rabbit, right? He's not tucking his wee bunny tail between his legs and fucking jobbing out. He's going to smoke LeBron in Space Jam. He's going to do whatever has to be done. Donald Duck, that guy with the shotgun hunting him. Jeremiah Otto is going to live forever. Fuck those brown people. <laughs> well, it turns out, actually, oh, you're not going to live forever. You're going to die. But we have to get to there later on in the episode. Have you ever wondered why did Ophelia somehow end up for this camp to the Indians? We'll find out straight away. We get a flashback, flash your eyes, back to the season 2 episode 15 finale. She crosses the border. What I didn't really like about this is, it's the fact that they literally played the exact same scene. We've seen Ophelia's point of view. Would it not have made more sense here to see Jeremiah's point of view? Yeah, a different perspective. Like, it's literally... Don't, the, need, don't need to see the same scene twice. I mean, it wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't get it. It's actually the. I mean, I can't really recall in this universe across both shows where there has been an instant like this where they've shown something like someone's. Po I actually believe with the no, with the governor they did, didn't they? I believe they were in. Yes, it, it was. Uh, you had Herschel and Michonne talking to each other, and then in his episode, when his flashback episodes finally cut up to real time, it showed you him watching from the woods. So there you go, boom! Off the top of my head, I came up with a, a perfect example here. But he feeds her, he gives her some water, he says, well, if you're heading to uh, Tijuana, wherever you're going, it's that way. She asks for a ride, and then he's like, that ain't going to happen. Brown people are not welcome at my home. She then spits at him, and he, I mean, he, he drives off like a bat out of hell. Meat like loaf. a bat out of hell, I'll be gone. Like a cracker, <laughs> like a cracker in the desert. I mean, like, is it poor form for Jeremiah Otto? Yes, I'll accept that. But it doesn't... It doesn't really fit his character, I don't think, because they let they let um, Luciana on the ranch, and she was infected. She looked like she was infected, could possibly die in turn. Plus, she was like um, she was brown. Um, I don't really get the feeling that Jeremiah is racist. Like, I know that's what they're trying to portray, but he hasn't not... shown an ounce of racism so far. Now, maybe because of what was going to happen in the, the final of this episode, maybe they wanted to try and paint him as this bad racist guy, and that's why they included the uh, the start here. But, I mean, yeah, it's pretty poor, but if, if he was really racist, he could have killed Ophelia. I'm actually going to defend him here. He shared his water as well. Like, I don't I mean, actually think this is racist from him. You know why? Because I think it's a simple case of... She's an enemy? Your, your people are over there? Yeah, your people hate me and want me dead and would kill me on, on first sight. You know, we, we see it in prison, you know, it's simply split up into race. And even though this may come across as racist, he could think she could be a spy for them. She, he doesn't know that. I mean, no, but if he really did hate people of Ophelia's colour, then he, he, he could have killed her. He didn't need to help her. He certainly didn't need to give her some of his own fucking water. So, um, yeah, I mean, could he have done more, possibly? But, like I said, the fact that she is a stranger... And she could, you know, I get just based on her skin colour, be part of uh, Walker's group. So I don't really think what he done was that wrong here. Yeah, and he's got the beef with it, with Walker. You've got to bear that in mind. And the problem is here, though, then, is it inconsistencies with the show, the fact they took in Luciana and looked after, looked, I mean, looked after her? What about Travis? What happened if he didn't get killed? Would he have just been shown the door? Maybe he could argue because they're already with Madison. But, I mean, Troy... You could see er earlier in the in episode one, like he did mention the fact that Travis wasn't white a few times. He did. Oh, I've got that Mahoya blood, man. It was not really that he wasn't white, but it was just more the fact that he was brown. You're brown. You're not white, buddy. Essentially, though, what I think this is, you touched on it. I think they're just trying to make you hate Jeremiah, make it feel justified at the end. And it wasn't just. Oh, kill yourself, mate, because you said no brown people are welcome here, even though it's clearly a battle of Indians against whites. Or any are any white people allowed to stay with the Indians? I, I just don't get this. So I, it's he's at war with these people. Does not make any sense to me, and we'll get to it a wee bit later on. But let's stick back to the past. Ophelia, she's wandering through the desert. She collapses. Walker 
finds her, he bathes her, he gives her food. I mean, she's completely naked here, he just flings her in the bath, she sorts herself out, and that is it. We get the intro. So, our entire intro to our mid-season finale was... Oh, look, Walker's not too bad. He looked after Ophelia. Well, Jeremiah, you called her a brown bastard. So, yep, Jeremiah is in the mud, so to speak, in that regard. Back in the present, though, we've got soccer mom Madison running after Ophelia. It's not a matter of life and death here. She's jogging up the hill. Da, 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 da. Awful scene. Um, this is why it should be someone of age or... I mean, at least if it's a man similar age to Madison, he'd fucking make it look real. Yeah, Madison's jogging like she's going for a... Just a jog. She's but, trying to catch her son's killer here potentially, but I think this. Go- I think, I mean I think this just goes for most women around this. I just don't think women can't women can't run as good as men. I think it's simple as that, man. Now I'm not saying here Jeremiah Otto is going to fucking run rings around Madison Clark here in a hundred meter sprint, but I just look at shows when people like look at Rick when the Walker and the present him and Daryl are running full pelt. I look know. how real it looked. Madison's treating this like it's a... I don't even know what it is. She's getting her cardio in. Ah, oh, God. And like, let's be real, right? If Ophelia escapes here, it's good night. This is life or death. She has to get Ophelia. She has to find out what the fuck she's done to these people. Yeah, so she does get Ophelia just about, beats the hell out of her. Um, then that's pretty much it. Uh, Could you imagine, though, if Madison was chasing after uh, Cammy Hayes when he took Abel? <laughs> it had been Belfast by the time she got to the end of the pier. So, yeah, I mean, I know, look at the happy jacks, like if you're running down the pier, madman, 100 miles an hour. Yeah, so uh, Madison, then after seeing her family is okay, well, they're not really okay, everyone's fucking sick and dying. So Madison goes on this one woman mad trip, she takes Ophelia to Walker, and it's just dumb because she tries to take Ophelia at gunpoint, but, I mean, she's surrounded by Walker's men. I mean, one of Walker's men could easily have dropped her here. If they wanted to, but for plot purposes, they don't. She walks into the diner, she starts speaking to Walker. Walker says, this happened because you broke the parley. Madison says, no one, the autos didn't break the parley. I me. broke the parley. I killed your guys. I wanted my daughter back. It was all me. And how does Walker... So at first he had like, you know, just... He had like no respect for the autos because they broke the parley. But when Madison tells him she broke the parley, all of a sudden she's more of a man than the autos. So like, where's the consistency in the writing here? His issue was with the par- with the autos breaking the parley. But when Madison confirms it was her, then he starts like praising her. He's like, look at this. She's more of a man than the autos. Give her all our land. She's a she's a straight and then, white female. And then he he tell he, he tells her the the drug that they used or whatever they used to try and poison the people, make the people sick. But anthrax, anthrax, it just it just makes no sense though. Yeah, he should have been up disgusted and upset with her that she broke the parley. But Jeremiah has not called for one act of war. No, he's not. Not fucking one. No, not that we've seen. Now we do find out there was a couple of dead bodies. But he explained that they were coming onto his ranch, they were killing his cattle. He was killing trespassers. Now, here in the UK, right, that's not really a thing. But in America, it's stand your ground, you're entitled to do It's fair game, buddy. So, for me, that that doesn't make Jeremiah a bad person, but apparently, he's an awful person. Now, maybe what you could say is he didn't go to the cops about it, like, it seems like he did it hush-hush, but at the end of the day, they're still trespassing on his land. Yeah, it's not like he went out and murdered them, is it? Yeah, like, he weighed it, to see the people who's attacking his ranch, and he killed them? Let's put it this way. Say the autos went to the, the Black Walker Reservation, whatever it's called, and they killed the, one of the autos, I'd be like, well, that's fair. Yep. Like, the Indians are stealing stuff off his land, and we're supposed to feel sorry for him. It's almost like a case of, here, see white guys, don't like them. You're, you're supposed to root for the Indians. And then you've got Ophelia greeting and not Ophelia, what's her name? Alicia. Uh, are we on the right side, Mom? <laughs> I don't get it. And then later that night, they actually go back. <laughs> they go back to Walker's place and they set some fires and they steal his relics. I mean, it's just constant back and forward. Going to each other's location, stealing shit. They steal the relics. They're trying to get, I don't know, they're trying to get leverage or whatnot. Walker then next day meets with Madison and... 
he wants the relic. She says, oh, look, here's a skull of somebody that you used to know. Here's your brother, your uncle, your dad, or whatnot. And um, he says, it's not enough. He wants something else. What does he want? He wants Jeremiah. He wants Jeremiah dead. I want that bastard dead. I want to piss in his mouth when he's on fire, damn it. It needs to happen. Like, you've got Alicia, though, accusing Madison, like, oh, you're heartless for starting with Troy because he killed the Trembles. And I think, you know what? I, I, I can't feel how that was justified. To, well, I can't. I said it a few episodes ago, Mel. I mean, I don't think they should have been able to take supplies and shit. But what Troy's done is way worse than anything Jeremiah's done. But yeah, he's killed Walker's uncle. What Madison's uncle. done is worse than what Jeremiah's yeah. done. What, what, what Jeremiah's done, he's killed Walker's uncle, and then he killed the father who appeared on his land, questioning what went down. So maybe you could argue that one's a wee bit shady, but the other ones are all right, man, for me. Um, but Alicia just crying here. Right, Strand. Let's talk about Strand. He gets back on his boat, the Abigail. Yeah, the Abigail. He takes out some walkers. He gets some wine, champagne, whatnot. Hey, Russian boy. Yeah, starts drinking and he falls in love with some Russian guy on the... <laughs> oh, Vladimir. On the, on the radio. Oh, Vladimir, you want to drink some Smirnov, buddy? You and want to go to the moon with Vladimir? Yeah, apparently this guy was in space or whatnot. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm buying this. He was on the moon. and He's like, like, are you Americans? You only think that uh, it happened to you. The whole, the whole earth is black, my friend. Like, what a fucking dumb thing for Strand to say, by the way, actually. Or is this only contained in North America? If that was the case, would you not have people coming in to try and rescue you and shit like that? And <laughs> Yeah, and like, wouldn't you... Like, wouldn't you have... By this point, you would know if the rest of the world's all right. A hundred percent. They've had radios, like, I was fucking... Like, imagine just believing... That it's just Mexico, Canada, uh, USA that's fucked, but the rest of the world living civilized. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. No, no one's even bothered attempting to take. I know a, the worst no time. one's a bothered attempting to take a plane or whatnot into America. None of the fucking criminals and refugees and illegals coming from like <laughs> Central America or South America have tried to fucking coming in illegally to America. You know, since this happened, like what the hell? No, let's be real though. Uh, the problem with this is Strand's actually the smartest character on the show for me. This ain't Chris. This ain't Nick. This ain't Alicia, like a kid. Yeah, this is like this, well, this, was. this is a guy who you know is like outsmarted people to get what he wants, and here he is getting absolutely snookered. Black's behind the white with the Russian here, and uh, yeah, he loses contact with the guys. He downs his last bit of champagne. What's Strand going to do? Well, I'll tell you what he does. He burns his boat down. There was a really cool scene where he. The flames were in his glasses. You liked it, didn't you? I thought it was good, I Should be the thumbnail. Should be the thumbnail. Isn't the thumbnail. Jeremiah's deed dome is the thumbnail. So let's talk about it. We had Madison talking about our dad, my daddy. I killed him because he was a alcoholic and he would beat my mother. And I would do it again if it meant protecting her family. Obviously, referring to the fact that Jeremiah is kind of like our daddy in this situation. And he is... An What's he doing though? Who's he harming? Who's he beating up? Who's he abusing? He's literally just sitting there. He's, brought, he's brought them in and fed them. Gave what, them a roof over their head. What a horrible guy. What a horrible guy. But Madison arrives at his house. She's like, right, um, Walker is willing to offer peace in exchange for your scalp. And he's like, so that's what it is, Madison. You came here to kill me. He's like, no, I didn't come here to kill you. Puts the gun down. I want you to do it. What? Why should he? Like, I, I just don't see why he fucking should. Why he's done nothing but be kind to the clerks. He's took the clerks in. He's been kind to everyone else. He's allowing people to stay in his ranch when he could just tell them all to leave. The guy Why would he nothing. kill himself because Madison feels unsafe that there's a war brewing on his fucking land? Yeah, it's absolutely insane. This, she, she th no, to... this would be like Sasha and Tyrese getting to the prison and, and going direct here. If the you, governor, governor wants the prison. You but, kill yourself. And, and, then we, and then it's all safe. What? Why the fuck would Rick agree to that? Why would he? And this is, this, he actually, his family's owned this land for fucking like, decades. But everyone seems to think that, no, I mean, this is a very fair thing to do. Like, me, like what? Like, honestly, it's like they included the Brown comment at the start of this episode. Just to try and justify killing the old white man? This is the most... You know, it seems like, I think, is all right this first half of seasons. The, the plot is not fucking broke. How can anyone come out of this episode and genuinely think that he should have killed himself here? No, definitely not. And Jeremiah didn't think so either. He says there's no way he's going to do it. 
He's not going to kill himself. He's not going to go out like a rabbit. It's not like Walker standing outside the house and, he, and he's like, right, if you don't kill yourself now, Jeremiah, I'm going to kill both your sons. It's not even in that situation. Even then, you go out swinging, man. You go out swinging, Jeremiah. Uh, so Jeremiah's not going to kill himself. I guess he gives the gun back to Madison. Is she going to do it? But then Nick, who, it seems like he's built up a decent, I don't know, a decent connection, a decent relationship with Jeremiah in the first half of this season. Just walks in and coolly executes Jeremiah, kills him, murders him. So how are the Clark family, like, how are they protagonists? I, I just don't fucking see it. Yeah, I don't get it. They've killed this guy in cold blood. Um, I mean, it, it was, it was, they gave him an ultimatum of either you kill yourself or I kill you. Not much of a choice, is it? I just do not, this is one of the, you know what, this, I don't really care for this show, but I actually cared for this character. And this, this genuinely annoyed me. And I wish this family, the Clark family, the worst. I mean, Travis, could you, right? Travis was the only likable guy. I would go as far as saying in the entire first two seasons, I think Travis was the only likable guy. I thought there was interesting characters, but in terms of likable, I think Travis was the only likable one. And he's fucking dead. Yeah. Could you imagine, I know Travis went off the rails a bit with Chris dying, but could you imagine Travis telling this guy to kill himself or I'm going to kill you? Just, it's a lot. Get your brown ass out of here. Get your brown ass out of here, buddy. But uh, then when you get like a really cheap um, montage of his body being taken out, and Jake and Troy run, they find that they're sad. It's like we don't, they, they don't even question. Like they know they're dead. And I believe Madison has his head. Yeah, she gives it to Walker. But how did his head get? Did she go and cut his head off when no one was looking? But see, that, that's a, that's another thing. They're not going to be like, where's his body? Where's his head? Um, it's just uh, what is now is Madison now the leader, and why the fuck is Walker and his tribe being portrayed as good people? I want to see the autos fucking take down Walker on the track, kick Madison out as well. I just don't get this, and and like the the, the brothers don't even like question like what happened. They well, we didn't just... have time. It was like a montage, so it's not. I mean, I wouldn't really look that deep into it. They probably will in it. I'm assuming next episode. I really hope they do. I hope they don't gloss over that, because that will actually fucking annoy me. But, I mean, Troy's kind of up Madison's ass, so... but And then Jake's a shite bag, so... True, what? but, I mean, Jake, out of the two, I mean, I thought Troy was the one that looked like he took it worse. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I just don't agree with this death. I, mean, I have no problem with the guy dying, but the way he goes out. Kill yourself or I'll do it. Wet. Damn, I thought it's death and sons he get shafted in here. I think he get fucking shafted even worse. I mean, I think it would have made more sense of like, I don't know, if Jeremiah was like pointing the gun at Madison and says, how dare you come in here and do this? And then like, Nick, Nick, Nick shot him. But for Nick just to come in and casually execute him. In cold blood. I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. And I don't think it fits Nick's character. No. I mean, Nick, Nick I'm not saying Nick's a good guy. He's, he's a fucking junkie. I mean, he was stealing people's <laughs> morphine. morphine and all this stuff. But I don't think execution is up Nick's alley. No. Nope. The guy didn't kill Troy and he had a chance. Wasn't very honourable. He didn't kill... Oh, but he, that's the guy that wouldn't kill Troy. But now he kills but his But he'll dad, kill Jeremy. Who he actually got on with. He built a decent rapport with him. Anyway, guys, I'm going to give us that sort of 6 out of 10. I mean, yeah, it's, it's been a pretty enjoyable season. It's been... I'll, I'll go as far as saying... It's not been great, but I'll go as far as saying it was probably as good as I could have hoped it would be. Yep, this mid season. I had no, I had no expect, I had no expectations. I think really. without dating Callie though, things are gonna go down. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But yeah, overall, pretty decent. I'll get a six too. Catch you in the next one, guys. And uh, yeah, sad to see him go, but we'll find out what happens in the second half.